Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 3D game in Unity. In this series, we will be making a game similar to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In this video, we will be adding our character to the scene and giving him some basic movements. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a ground for our player to run around on. We're going to go over here to the hierarchy window and we're going to right click and we're going to go all the way down here to 3D object. And over here we can see a bunch of pre-made 3D objects for us to use. Cube, spear, cylinder, and we're going to be using the plane. So right here is our plane. As you can see right here, here's our x-axis, here's our z-axis, and our y-axis for our plane. We can move our plane around just like this by dragging on any of these arrows. And as you can see over to the right, the number in the transform uh, window changes as we move it. Right now I'm just gonna put this smack dab center 0, 0, and 0. Now we also, as you can also see we have scales. Right now our scale is 1 by 1 by 1. We're gonna make ours a little bigger. We're gonna give ourselves 10 in that direction and 10 in the Z direction to give our players some room to run around on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename our plane. Right up here, we're just going to put ground. We can also rename our object. Right down here, we could just hit rename and typed in ground there. The next thing we're going to do is going to give our ground some color. We're going to go down here, we're going to create a new folder. It's going to be called materials. We're going to open up our new materials folder, then we're going to right click again, we're going to go up to create, and then we're going to come down here to material. And we're just going to call this material ground for now. Now over here you can see that we have many different options for all the uh, things we want to do with our material. We're going to go a little more into detail about materials when we start doing the terrain. But for right now, go right here to this little color block, and we'll go to the color green, and we'll pick, let's see, I think that's a good shade of green for the ground. So now that we have our ground color, we can simply drag it and place it right on our ground just like that. Or we could have just taken it and dragged it over to here and it would have done the same thing. Now we're going to add our player to the scene. First we're going to go back into the hierarchy window, we're going to right click, we're going to go down to 3D object again, and we're going to click capsule. This capsule is going to be what we're going to add our player movements to. Later on, we'll add our night prefab. We're going to rename it player. And we're going to center it on our plane by typing 0.0, .0 right there in the X and Z axis. And we're going to lower it down right down to the base of the plane. As you can see, our capsule has some components already added to it. We want to add a character controller to this. So the very first thing we have to do is disable the capsule collider that is right here. That is because the character controller already has a collider with it. There we go. And now we are going to create a script because the character controller needs movement added to it and it also needs physics added to it so we're gonna have to add some gravity to it so we're gonna go into our scripts folder we're gonna right click we're gonna go up to create create C sharp script and we're gonna create a script called character controller and now we're gonna open up our script Now that you have Visual Studio open, we can get to work on our c -sharp script. Up here, we're going to add a public float. And this is going to be the movement speed of our character. Next, we're going to add our character controller, which is also going to be public. Right there, and we're going to name this just simply player controller. And lastly, our next 
our variable is going to be a private vector 3. And we're going to name this move direction. In our start, we're going to call our player controller. It's going to be a get component character controller. It's a function, so it needs parentheses. And voila. There we go. That's better. And over here in our update, in our frame for frame, we are going to add our movement, move direction, and it's going to be a new vector 3. Input, get axis, horizontal, and we're going to multiply that by our movement speed float and in our y direction it's going to be zero and then it's going to be input dot get axis and then in our z direction it's going to be vertical and we're also going to multiply that by our move speed and we're going to end that with a colon. And then down below to smooth out our frame by frame rate, we're going to have our player controller dot move. We're going to our move direction and then times our time dot delta time and then we need to add our gravity so then we're going to move direction in the y direction and that's going to equal to move direction dot y plus and here's where we add our physics dot gravity dot y times time dot delta time and that should end our movement script right now oh I just realized the air conditioner has been on I hope that wasn't noisy in the background okay so now we're gonna hit save and we're gonna go back now that we are finished with our script we're simply going to take it, drag it over, add it as a component to our player. Over here in the movement speed, we'll put it at 10 for now. Over in the player controller, the player controller hasn't been added. So we're going to add it into that slot. Then we're going to hit play. Now our player has some movement added to him. Next time, we're going to add the camera and the camera rotation. Thank you for watching, like my video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links in the description and below. See you next time!